fucking stormy night. <laughs> Good evening and welcome. It's uh, Thursday, February 18th, 2016. It is just after 7 o'clock uh, in the evening. This is the Newmarket School Board a call a meeting to order. Ask folks to rise and join Julia in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> there, has been, uh, there has been so much going on uh, with the superintendent search uh, and the uh, budget season, and so uh, we don't this evening have um, uh, learning celebration to share uh, so we'll move right through the budget and we're at public comment and I'll invite folks to offer any comments that they might have for us this evening seeing none uh, we'll move along and uh, I'll ask Julia to offer a her report and then we'll consider the calendar that's before us with all kinds of great events coming up all right, well, boys basketball is 11-5, and five, and their next game is Friday away against Wilton Lindenboro. Girls basketball is 7-10, and 10, and their next game is tonight against Portsmouth Christian. And the ice hockey team's record is 10-4-1, and four and, one, and their next game is home against Keene. Vacation begins next week, and we'll resume school on the 29th. Uh, the sixth, green, sixth grade museum displays parent night will be Mar March 2nd, uh, so it's Wednesday, from 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, progress <coughs> reports come out on March 4th, and juniors will be taking the SATs on March 2nd. And lastly, I'd like to add that the Pizza Bowl was last night, and I would like to thank all those who came out to support our senior class. That's awesome, excellent. What group is promoting, what group is behind uh, Chris Placey and the program that he's been doing. Is that Pick? Is it Wellness? It's, uh, Lisa? Lisa come. Lisa, come from Wellness. Lisa come from Wellness? Um, I'm sorry that we haven't been talking about that because that uh, the attendance hasn't been probably, I guarantee it hasn't been as high as it should be. There ought to be 100 people at that session. The value that Chris is offering up and the information that's being shared. Have we got a couple of those left? Maybe? Let's, can we try to just make a note I'd love to have that on our calendar because I'd like to be able to remind the public every chance we get they just met Tuesday not Wednesday Tuesday Tuesday was it last night last night so they met last night and that was his third maybe session we're doing it monthly uh, he's been Chris has been as a part of our wellness programming he's been speaking to different perspectives or different uh, elements of the uh, of uh, what do I want to say? I say opioid use, uh, heroin, drug use in schools, our student population. Uh, it's it's not specific to Newmarket. It's specific to parenting and kids and what we should be, what we should know, and what we should be afraid of, and what we should talk about, and how we should tackle. Some of them are appropriate for parents only. Some of them are appropriate to bring your kids. I attended the first one and thought great thoughts about hitting them all because it's just great information. But I want to make sure that we echo that moving forward. So. Look for that, probably not one in March, right? We probably skipped that. Oh no, we probably do have one in March. All right, so March 3rd, I'll try to make sure we know what that is. <clears throat> I don't know what act of God or Congress it took, but the fact that dessert in a show is on a Tuesday night this time for my kid, and I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be there grinning to watch her in the band, that's great. That's uh, Tuesday the 15th of March at 6.30. At the elementary school, dessert in a show is Thursday night the 17th at 6.30. Anything else that should be on our calendars? Awesome. Excellent. Moving along then. Uh, we had the opportunity at the public hearing to welcome Meredith <coughs> Nato, uh, having been hired as our next superintendent of schools, joining us July 1st. Uh, but, but that was a it was a different kind of session and not everybody was there but Meredith is in the room with us tonight and so for those that are watching at home and for the the rousing audience of rabble you know zealots here in the room just hold them at bay we want to make sure that they don't jump up and come get you uh, but Meredith is joining us and if she has 
even a couple of comments to make. <coughs> what I asked her to do when we met earlier was, with absolutely no notice whatsoever, um, and you don't have to talk about all of it. It's been a lengthy experience that you've had, but just uh, remind the folks, if you came to the mic, remind the folks where you came from, um, you know, all of the things that make them feel like you're a local, and, uh, uh, and introduce yourself in that regard, will you? Certainly. We're so glad to have our next superintendent <coughs> of schools joining us tonight. Meredith so, Nato, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. It feels strange Come to Come on be down. <laughs> So uh, I will be coming to you uh, most recently from Cape Elizabeth, Maine, where I've been the superintendent for the last four and a little bit more than half uh, years. And prior to that, I worked as the director of instruction in the Oyster River Schools, just a few miles down the road. And um, at the time we lived in Lee, we still have a house there at the moment. Um, I am a parent to nine <coughs> and seven-year-old daughters and have a wonderful um, husband who has been home with them for the last number of years. Um, but I am also the granddaughter and great-granddaughter of Newmarket High School alumni. Um, my, my grandmother graduated back in, in the 40s and her mother before her in the 1920s in the late 20s so um, one of the first graduates of the old building here that that pieces of which are are still very much in use today so um, <coughs> both like of them must have had at least one class in this building because wasn't this oh I'm part sure of the, no, not until later years this was a parochial school. oh this was parochial way way back okay cool Sorry. Um, but I have I, you had class. <laughs> I'm not sure what the pizza bowl was, but I do remember bowling in the bowling alley in Newmarket as a young woman and visiting Dr. Rob Shaw in his dental practice down the street <laughs> for a number of years and, um, again, feel like this is a um, very at-home community. I had the opportunity today to visit with folks across the district and spent some time at the junior senior high school and at the elementary school later in the day. And, um, again, I'm really excited to be coming here. To me, this is a, a what feels like a great fit. It's a small community that I think is um, very collaborative and enthusiastic and creative about meeting the needs of students and um, holds education as a really strong core value. And I'm excited to come to work for you. Outstanding. Great. Excellent. We welcome you. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. <coughs> we, uh, I, I, I called, <coughs> called home as I was driving to Newmarket for tonight. <coughs> and when the call was answered, my child said, are you going to meet with the new superintendent now? <laughs> and I said, uh, I am, in fact. How did you know that? And I thought, did I put it on a calendar somewhere that she saw? She said, no, but I know she's here. And I said, what do you mean? I saw her today. I said, oh, <laughs> did she visit the junior senior high? I saw her at both schools. <laughs> <laughs> should, I tell, should I tell Meredith that she, she's in trouble? Are you stalking her? It's too great. Uh. She was uh, definitely present in the schools. It's great to it's great to get those reports from the kids. So welcome, welcome. Glad you were in the district today. That's great. Uh, so having had a chance to do that, let me shed light on uh, one of the <coughs> other benefits of Meredith being with us today and this evening. The next item on the agenda is a report on district transition planning, and so. Um, in in fueling the fire of speculation that Nathan likes to hear himself speak. Um, let me do so for just a couple of minutes and and tell you where we tell you where we've come from and where we're at with regard to transition planning um, we have now named we selected through a very successful search process our next superintendent <coughs> the school board engaged began uh, in a conversation about transition and and some change that might be um, appropriate well over a year ago our interim superintendent, uh, Dr. Martin, made comments to us last year a couple of times that, um, that one of the things that the district could certainly benefit from is having a more, a more defined uh, number two in the organization for times when the superintendent is uh, unavailable or certainly the interim was seeing some of that. Uh, he's working as many days as possible but staying under a 32-hour threshold and so having a definitive number two uh, in the organization for that but also to provide leadership and guidance in any number of areas uh, in support of the superintendent of schools was something that he brought to us as a as a, a subject matter some number of months ago and so the board has has tossed that around and continued a conversation about uh, defining the number two uh, or in the organization and then through the process of um, through the process of search for a superintendent we actually sat 
uh, in a number of uh, interviews the board did with candidates and talked about the human resources at the disposal of, uh, disposal of a new superintendent, the, 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 the benefits that could uh, be derived from uh, uh, adjustments to that were discussed. We talked about the resources that we have, that we should have, that we could have, uh, and got feedback from a number of candidates. And we had feedback from the search committee because they had some conversation as well through the process that led up to that. All through that, among the things that were discussed was um, the importance of, uh, of, of strong support for the superintendent in the, in the superintendent's office. Uh, since we've hired Meredith, we've had uh, uh, multiple opportunities to sit with her and discuss the structure of the organization today, uh, the uh, assets that are in place, and, uh, and, the, uh, and some of the changes that we might consider making moving forward. One more consideration that factors into all of that is that Pat Ballantyne has been uh, with us for approaching 40 years as an educator and as uh, the, currently the director of curriculum instruction. She's a, a very important asset to the district and leader um, among our administrators. And she has announced her retirement June 30th. And so there, there is a need to fill that vacancy but also an opportunity to contemplate change that might benefit the district. So the board's been involved in all of that conversation, or we have had that conversation, and the public certainly can be and should be aware of the fact that we have taken the opportunity to go into non-public session on multiple occasions over the last couple of months for purposes of discussing personnel matters, specifically um, the promotion and or hiring of public employees because we've been discussing this transition, uh, the organizational structure that might best serve the district moving forward. And, uh, and so tonight, this report on district transition planning is, is really just the first step, I think, in beginning to roll out uh, the changes that we anticipate making. And, uh, and the, the, the goal, certainly should be said, is to make sure that we help Meredith Nato, our new superintendent, hit the ground running in July. And, and help support her in providing the greatest possible productivity in terms of um, leading this district at least over the first six or 12 months. So all of that said, um, how was that? Did I, I say enough to no, lay I think, the ground? No, I, I think it makes, it makes total sense, Nate, um, that we, you know, we, want, we don't want to lose any time um, that we can um, you know, gain by you know, sound transition planning. Um, we know we have needs. Um, Pat's Pat's going to be transitioning in her, her role, um, and you know it's a great opportunity that you know. And, and we're, um, I guess, uh, it's great that Meredith has, has given us some of her time already, mm. so we don't have to start fresh on July first. Um, this is the way to do it. You know? And I think the other thing is is. Um, most people that know Pat and knows Pat's role um, in the SAU, it's, it's broader than director of curriculum. Um, she, in fact, has been, during many years of transition and many years of new superintendents, holding the, holding the, uh, the ball for us. Um, and uh, to have her go out, which we're, we're not pleased she's doing, but she deserves it. To have, some, to have things in place for June 1st is mandatory. We're losing her, we're getting a new superintendent, so um, we, as you said, Nate, we've put a lot of thought into what those, what those alternatives uh, could be, and I think we've come up with a, I know we've come up with a great solution. I think it's a great solution. Well, let me say <coughs> this out loud then, and then I'll ask the superintendent to help us out. The consensus of the board through all of this exploration has been, um, and and with the support of both in our, our interim superintendent and our uh, forthcoming superintendent, <coughs> the first step in our transition is to, is to rename the position that Pat has been filling as director of curriculum instruction, renaming that to assistant superintendent. Uh, the position right now is a little bit, a little bit greater than school year in terms of number of days under contract. We need to make the position a 260-day full-year position, and clearly define this position uh, as we move forward as as second in the organization. 
and uh, certainly the job of focus on curriculum and instruction and student assessment as PATS has, uh, and there will be support for an oversight of federal grants, not just uh, not just the consolidated grants, but maybe all of the federal grants. And there are other elements that may certainly be added under that umbrella as we continue to discuss the job description and the position. So that is our is our first our first announcement, I guess, is that we're ready to move forward in creating. Um, uh, a new name, renaming that Director of Curriculum Instruction Position Assistant Superintendent. And I guess before we had discuss it any further, maybe you could help us sure. because uh, we have a more specific plan than that based upon all of the work that we've done. And if you could make a nomination, we'll keep going from there. Thank you, Nathan. Um, <coughs> as a newcomer to, to Newmarket, uh, <coughs> when I first arrived a little over a year and a half ago, uh, I th I felt it to be my assignment to learn about the district. And as over the course of the year, um, <clears throat> I thought one of the most important or things that happened was the recognition Newmarket got as a quality school system in, in the course of the year. And, and, and I thought that was extremely important. And when you think in terms of transition, you think in terms of it trying to be seamless you don't want too many things to fall through the cracks along the way. You want it to, you want to, conti you want continuity. C continue to do the things that we're doing well, and you need help uh, as a superintendent to have some folks help you with that because you have a lot to learn. And finally, you're trying to keep everything running smoothly or in balance. And when I was trying to figure out how Newmarket achieved uh, this academic success and this academic recognition, I really felt there were two people in the organization that had a major role in accomplishing that. They had been here for a period of time and they were both very strong in curriculum. And one is retiring. That's Pat Ballantyne. And the second I felt was Chris Andrisky. I felt his 10 years of service to the district um, <clears throat> and his attention uh, to curriculum and instruction really was impressive and in fact he's uh, obtained graduate degrees in that and and so therefore I'd like to nominate him for the uh, uh, new uh, the renamed position assistant superintendent of schools um, as you know that's your decision whether you follow that or not you have to elect but you know, when it comes to certified people, it's the superintendent's job to do that. And I'm proud and pleased to put his name before you. And I am proud and pleased to accept that nomination. Let me have a second then to that. Second. So uh, we've had some conversation about this, obviously, through these several weeks of discussion <laughs> uh, and planning. Um, I guess I would open it up. I would remind folks that what we're talking about is uh, is transition that would rename the Director of Curriculum Instruction to Assistant Superintendent, a position that ultimately Chris would fill full-time in July after past retirement. In the interim, Chris will begin the transition. I think we've talked about it, and it needs to be said, Chris will continue <coughs> to be the principal of the Newmarket Junior <coughs> Senior High School through June 30th. Uh, but will some number of hours, day, day and a half, whatever can be worked, uh, begin to work in the central office with Pat and with the superintendent and begin to manage that transition towards July 1 being full time in that role. Uh, so having said that, uh, you know, we've had hours of conversation, thoughts that folks have that they'd like to share that help uh, guide us in this. Well, just working with Pat over the past three years, you realize and we've said it numerous times, Pat is the assistant superintendent. We've just never acknowledged that. We've never given her the title. And <clears throat> to, it, it just makes more sense. There's more to her job than just this cur curriculum coordinator that we've, we've seen her spread herself out so thin lately. Um, I just I think it's a natural transition. Meredith really, Meredith and Michael helped us with see that. You know, I, I, from my standpoint, coming out of the private sector, uh, one of the things that excellent organizations do um, is they develop their employees, and that's a sign of a that's a sign of an organization that's selfish uh, because it wants continuity, 
Um, it wants people to feel like they have a place to go. Um, one of the things that disturbs me about municipal employees, uh, particularly in leadership roles, is they tend to turn over every three or four years. And I can tell you as a board member that's very disheartening because you lose the essence, you lose the institution that you're trying to work so hard for. Um, so I, I look at it, um, I don't know Chris that well. I mean, I've worked with him only this short period of time, but as a, as a practice, uh, excellent organizations promote from within. They don't promote from within just to do it, but they take advantage of these opportunities. And uh, I'm, I couldn't be more thrilled and proud to, to be able to do it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited as <clears throat> much as I get excited, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> it's not usually a term I use, but it's, it's a win-win-win for everybody. And that's an overused term because, I mean, I, I, I totally agree with Al that it, it, uh, promoting from within is, is, is healthy. Um, it, it not only um, is, is healthy for those individuals to get promoted, but for, for the organization to realize that there, there can be opportunities from within. It's healthy because somebody wants to stay. Chris has been here 10 years. He wants to stay. That's a good thing, you know. Um, it's helpful, in, uh, uh, certainly in the, in the immediate with, with Pat, you know, Chris and Meredith sort of and, and Mike putting their heads together. Um, we've got fresh eyes coming in to look at things, you know, uh, a vast experience in Meredith. And we've got institutional knowledge with Pat and, and Chris. And um, um, my, my, my late father-in-law used to say, Mike, you might be smarter than I, than I am, but I've made more mistakes. So, so listen to me. So, <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and we got a lot of, we got a lot of, lot of experience and a lot of, lot of brain power here. And um, from, a, from a board point of view and from a district point of view, I'm happy to see that, you know, um, and, and this will be a trend. I think going forward that we're uh, this is affirmative planning. Um, we're not showing up on July 1st and, and Meredith doesn't know where the key to her office is and that type of stuff. This is proactive. Um, it's uh, it's thoughtful, and um, I, you know I think I think it's going to work out for for all involved. We're not throwing Chris immediately into the fire. Um, he's got you know f uh, kind of a busy job running the school. I think that you know <laughs> he would say that and. Um, but uh, I, I get, uh, I'll reiterate, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Excellent. I think, Mike, you hit it on the head when you talk about the thing that excites me the most is hitting it proactively instead of reactively, primarily, but also taking the wealth of knowledge in it that we have from Chris, bringing him to the central office, and then having Meredith come in with fresh set of eyes, fresh new ideas, and that team leading the district can take us as, as far as we want to go. And I think it's a very exciting time for us. Um, and I, I, if, I, if I can talk just a little bit more, I want to give Chris a few props. I've seen him in a couple of different roles. Um, last year I um, um, coached kind of side by side with him on our girls basketball team. Our daughters are close in age and, and you can't fake enthusiasm. You can't fake excitement and genuineness. and. And, and I saw that in, in, in Chris. He, he, you know, if, if practice could have been four hours, he would have kept the girls there. I mean, I mean that that tells me a lot. And you know, the other thing that tells me a lot is when, more recently, when we Chris and I have been sitting down working on, on on the Ed specs, I, I can really tell that I, I sense, I sense enthusiasm there. That, that that he's not, you know, Chris. He wants to be there, and and he's he's excited about the process. Um, and and um, boy, you can't. You can't. Can I can I say something else? My fa my fa my father on said, "What was the other one? You 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 can buy somebody's back, but you can't buy their heart." You know, and you um, Chris is here because he has a good heart and uh, he cares about this place. And I, I think you can't underestimate that. And, and fi <coughs> finally, from an organization standpoint, one of the things we talked about we talked about candidates. We talked about defining positions. We got input from candidates, from the search committee, from us. And one of the practical matters we have to deal with is, is replacing Chris. And we need to do it now. Yes, we need to do it. Because if we're going to have a, a new principal in the school 
July, July 1st, we're right at the end of the recruiting cycle. <coughs> uh, so selfishly, it's a need right. to get this to get this thing rolling. So, um, well, and we've been involved in this planning and this transition conversation now forever. for for it seems like forever, <clears throat> and so for the benefit of the public. Uh, Tonight is the first step, and we have some other announcements that we'll make, and then we just continue to work forward on the details that um, that we haven't shared tonight or that we don't have tonight. But <coughs> I, I have to say, I want to say for Chris, uh, I, I sat with him on a couple of occasions talking about building needs, program needs, and I I shared with him the other day. I in all of the years I've done this working with principals, uh, I, he really shines in terms of the command that he has of the program uh, and the, the space needs and the command of everything that's happening in his in his organization right now at the junior senior high school in terms of how to best optimize how to nuance how to roll with the punches he's certainly doing that in the absence of a gymnasium over there right now uh, and finding ways to continue to you know to, to, to make peace and to make productivity every day in that building and uh, and I'm glad that we're finding a way to continue to grow him and give him opportunities, but keep him here to the benefit of our district and our community and our kids. So the superintendent has put forward a nomination for Chris Andrisky to become assistant superintendent of schools for the New Market School District. Is there any more discussion? I have a motion from Elizabeth McKinney and a second from Al Zink to accept his nomination. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? We're unanimous. Chris, congratulations. Can we shake it? I hand? think we should take a three, four, five minute break and just give a chance to <coughs> say hi and thank Chris. There you go. And invite the public, don't go away. We have more to talk about. <laughs>
and uh, take all the feedback based upon uh, Meredith's expectations moving forward next year, Chris's experience, and his uh, the conversations that we've had about this, and Pat's experience in the job that this was, the director of curriculum instruction. And so uh, I invite us to have some conversation if you'd like about it when we get to that point in the agenda. Otherwise, what I'm hoping is that they'll give us some edits and we'll revise that and review that at our next meeting as well. So back to the public conversation. Um, couple of other things and the details again we, we have less less um, substance maybe with or you know to offer with the next couple of things but it's important that we give you a sense of where we're heading and then we'll talk more at the meetings that are coming um, Meredith is joining us July 1st full-time and she is investing some time and is among us as I said she's met with us multiple times in this conversation uh, and we continue to talk about others and so we, we want to try to build a process or build a, uh, a transition that allows her to have some impact and some influence on the conversations and the decisions that we make. Uh, we're looking for her, to her for guidance. Uh, at the same time, we appreciate Mike Martin and the role of superintendent acting as, the, our, as our, our actual in, uh, superintendent right now but also recognize that over the next four months, Mike, who's part-time now in that role, will, will begin to transition himself towards June 30th. Uh, and at some point, uh, will, will become more part-time than he is now as, uh, as other opportunities present themselves and as we transition these guys in. One of the concerns that we anticipated the public might have would be that we are creating a whole lot of quote-unquote administrative strength here or administrative uh, expense or, or presence and the reality is we're trying as we talk about this transition planning to really transition all of the bodies in and out if you want to call it that and so uh, Chris will begin to come to the central office and work in a part-time capacity as assistant superintendent the details of that we're still working through what I think everybody needs to know is that Chris will continue to be principal, as I said a few minutes ago, and he will he will maintain a home at at uh, the junior senior high primarily, and and even even when he is working as the assistant superintendent on central office issues, he may certainly be doing that sitting at his desk there, or you may find him in the central office uh, down here at town hall. Um, as we contemplate as we contemplate the chaos that may come. <laughs> And we don't want chaos, we want organization. But as we contemplate uh, an interim transitioning out, a new superintendent transitioning in, Pat mentoring Chris and Chris working in that central office role, the other announcement that we'd like to make is that in order to clarify, and we hope that it does, uh, Pat will continue to be the director of curriculum instruction for now, but we're going to retitle Pat. Uh, this is a decision the superintendent uh, can act on and will act on. Retitling Pat assistant to the superintendent and and the greatest role that Pat will offer up is that for the for the next four months she will in the absence of the superintendent be um, well, not in the absence of she will be that number two that we've talked about she's essentially been that and we've talked about her being that but we want to make sure that we say it publicly to Pat <laughs> you're it <laughs> but but we say that we say that for public consumption um, uh, certainly we've leaned on her that way as have the superintendents that have come and gone and I know Mike would say uh, that she's been real important to, to him over the last few months uh, that he's been here with us and and so that's an, another change coming uh, is that Pat will take the role of assistant to the superintendent and uh, and it'll be a great way it'll be a great role in, in that case for her to liaise with both of the superintendents coming and going, uh, helping to channel information effectively and appropriately to, to them so that we can get the right decisions made. Mike will continue to act on things that have to be acted on day by day. Certainly we want to shove in Meredith's p direction things that have impact beyond July and that she'll want to know about and begin to prepare for. And we'll, uh, we'll count on Pat to help judge that in the absence of the superintendent and, 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 and give guidance to those topics as they arise. And, I, and I, I think most importantly, organizationally, <clears throat> we talked about this as, as Mike's uh, hours reduce 
his availability is going to reduce, and we want to make it clear to the organization that people should go be going to Pat. Right. Not trying to get Mike Thursday morning at 1 o'clock. So if right. it's a personnel issue or um, um, I, 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 can't, I can't articulate other issues, the administrative issues, do, the, the reporting relationship is clearly going to Pat. Right. And Pat will do what Pat needs to do to work with Mike to have the, the I don't want to say bureaucracy, but, but that's the only thing, fulfilled. She can effectively make decisions that she judges are appropriate for her to make, right. and she'll find the, find the right people to make decisions if, if she doesn't feel she can, and she'll appropriately delegate if there's others that can act. And if yep. Pat feels the necessity to go further to the board yep. or to Mike, that's her call. That's her call to make, yep. But, this, but the organization look at, should look at, will look at her as being the superintendent right. in charge. For we this didn't, next three months for the public's consumption for everybody's <coughs> consumption we, we one of the things as we talked about planning was oh wow well, we can't call everybody we can't call not everybody we can't have two assistant superintendents running at the same time but we wanted to try to declare that role and so we've decided assistant to the superintendent would be the way we would do that uh and and we hope that there'll be some clarity the job description will change only in such in, only in the way that you just described. We will add that level of responsibility for organizational matters. Her functional duties otherwise will continue. She'll continue to be the the, the, uh, the be all and end all that she has been all along. So but I think somehow we need to, or the, somebody needs to communicate to the organization what we're talking about now. Because I, it, will, it will surely come up in the next day or week or month. Yep. I think and one of the things we've talked about is that moving forward, not only will there be a press release that will describe <coughs> the decisions okay. we made tonight, but there'll be an internal release that will clarify Pat's role, and that'll be that'll go out to all staff and, and so that we know that internally. Chris on, and Sean will probably yeah. meet with yep. their staff. Then on those snowy, snowy evenings, Mr. Martin, Dr. Martin, can repose with his with his uh, comforter and let Pat worry about whether we're going to call off school or not. It's awesome. <coughs> So, <laughs> the board has an organizational uh, an organizational plan that speaks to this. Uh, it didn't make it into the packet, but we will revisit, uh, and we will add that along with the job description to the packet next time. Now that we have this document, we can advise. You know, we can tweak it and adjust it. We'll add that to the board pa the, the board packet next time so that it's it's more public and it gets more more circulation and people have a sense of what we're describing and discussing. Uh, <clears throat> before we move in on the move on the agenda to other things, I guess I look out at the audience and I see Meredith and ask anything, any comments. Uh, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot any more than I already have. Although we'll always do this just this way, but anything else that you'd want to say that we haven't said about the the transition and the planning and how we've done and how we're going to do what we're going to do. Anything else that you know? I don't think I have a lot to add. I certainly appreciate that I've had the opportunity to meet with Dr. Martin on a couple of occasions to meet with the board. I've had the opportunity to meet with Chris and with Pat. Um, and, and so I feel like everything's been really well thought out. I feel like people are poised to sort of move this forward. I'm confident that there'll be open communication and collaboration. And I look forward to you know, working with the board and Dr. Martin in uh, moving this principal search forward. Um, and, and certainly there'll be additional communication, obviously, that comes, you know, from Dr. Martin's office and from you as that moves forward. But I, I feel like things have been very thoughtfully done. I, I trust the judgment of people who have worked here. Certainly, you know, I've had limited interactions with Chris, but I certainly know of the work of the district. And, um, the, you know, as, as Dr. Martin described, the, the accolades that the high school, junior, senior high school has received over the years. And I, I feel like he has that strong background, as you've described a lot of great reasons um, to move him into that role and I look forward to working with him. We really do appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you. Perfect. You're welcome. Okay guys. Anything anything else on that subject of reporting on district planning? Excellent. Then uh, <clears throat> let me move on to continuing items. We have two continuing items we've held on to. One is facilities, one communications. Uh, Mike, you want to Offer up anything under facilities? Has it so been quiet? Great, Nate. 
after all that good stuff, they follow the facilities. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Get um, excited. Yeah. <laughs> so is, um, That's is Mike excited. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he's chewing on, I want some of that because he said some real nuggets tonight. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> facilities, I've already alluded to what Chris and I have, uh, have had, it's not just Chris and I, but it's, it's um, uh, we're sort of at, I, I would call it more at the editing phase, you know, uh, fly specking the, uh, the, uh, the ed specs, which are, the, the last stop is not obviously with us. Um, we've talked about it before, um, that the idea here is that since these are such a foundational document for any facilities solution um, for both schools going forward that um, and we're working on the elementary version too with with uh, Banwell's help with the architects help that we, we really need to make these clear they need to somebody a townsperson needs to be able to you know they find a copy of these at the at the bean while they're grabbing their coffee in the morning <coughs> pick them up and be able to understand what they are um, you know if we, if we don't do that I think we've kind of failed in that effort and these that's why we're We've sort of pulled up the brakes a little bit on meetings, and uh, we were meeting pretty frenetically there for a while because we realized that you know we got to nail these things down, and so we've been working on that. Um, we expect to probably wrap those up in the next, it's in foreseeable future, here, next couple of three three weeks, and then move it on to a joint meeting. Um, and as as Meredith Meredith sitting here, obviously. Um, Meredith has to cast her eyes over them too because she's got valuable input and you know will ultimately live with them um, but have you know, a joint meeting between the facilities committee and the school board so in the architect and um, all all players um, f from administration so we can answer all our questions at once hopefully they'll they'll be self-explanatory they'll make sense and um, We'll check off on them and we'll move forward, um, but we need to do that. So that's what we're up to. Nof nothing else on facilities. And <clears throat> I guess next is communications. I'll start out if that's okay. Sure. Um, we, thanks to Chris Williams from Channel 13, <coughs> we have produced a video um, that is going to be released really starting tomorrow through the newsletter and. Um, various social media sites to discuss the Warren articles for the votes taking place on March 8th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the town hall. Um, just so people can be aware of the, the items that are to be voted on, some background <coughs> information on them. Um, with the communications piece, after this goes out, we will then, the next uh, piece of communication will be a blurb of some, in some form about the transition plan that we've just talked about tonight. Um, with input from all the parties involved so that we get it clear and concise and that everyone understands fully what we're doing. So that's where we sort of stand with all that. Um, one more, two more thanks. Thanks to Chris for meeting with me and um, Chris Andrisky and for Jason Carey for the help that he's done helping me navigate the technical waters uh, of all this stuff. I appreciate the most. So I, I, I did, Nate and I did the videos. We actually were um, very excited there. Yeah, I was really excited. Um, <laughs> Um, where do we find them? I, they're going to be, they're on <coughs> YouTube on, on channel 13 right now. They're going to be on the school landing page of the website. They're going to be sent out via the um, MailChimp uh, newsletter database. There's going to be a phone, a Blackboard message sent out to the parents in the district asking for people to su sign, subscribe if they haven't done it. There was an option to subscribe in the town newsletter. Um, as well as some communication from the um, the rec center. So we're trying to, and, and I, I met with a wonderful townsperson today who gave me some great ideas about getting it out even further. So we'll take some of those initiatives too and move it all forward. So just to keep people wow. informed. Great. <clears throat> the only thing I've got on communications, we talked at the last school board meeting about having three meetings in March of individuals that met with Mike and I early in our school board careers uh, to talk about what we've been doing on the school board and get input from this group as to whether they think we're doing the right thing the right way. Um, so next week a, a, a letter will go out um, to all of the pe people that participated in those meetings last time. Um, and 
<coughs> um, given that Mike and I are not newbies anymore, and given the fact that three of us can't meet together with the group, we're going to break up those three meetings with two of some of us uh, to talk about, to talk with you. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to include the uh, report. Help me here, Mike. The Joyce report. The, the Joyce, Joyce report, report with yeah. that letter mm -hmm. so that we expect people to come in prepared for the meetings um, to talk about uh, what that report says and uh, so we're going to require a little bit of homework um, from the, from those folks for those individuals that don't receive an invitation in the letter that goes out to the to the people that were at our first meeting um, we're going to give them the opportunity to invite additional people um, and as, as uncomfortable as we may feel about having made the first selection we promised those folks that we would get together with them again. And they're an extremely diverse group of folks. Um, so we, at the next board meeting, I'll announce when those meetings are. We're going to have a sign-up sheet. <coughs> um, and with Kim's help, we can do some kind of first-come, first-serve uh, sort, of, sort of scheduling. Uh, but it's a, part, it's a half work session to talk about the Joyce Report, half work, uh, a little bit of an introduction as to what we're doing now. But most importantly, to send us off with any public input, very diverse public input on primarily facilities, but other things as well. So we're looking forward to it. Thank Excellent. you. <coughs> Maybe next year I'll, I'll be invited to some of those Christmas parties you all were talking about. Right. <laughs> Get out and meet, <laughs> meet all these people. All right. <coughs> Moving on from continuing items. Uh, we talked about the position description for assistant superintendent. I'll invite folks to offer any feedback uh, uh, via email, and then we'll see that in our next packet with the adjustments that uh, that uh, the administrators offer up. That moves us on to policy. There are four new policies. Forgive me. There are three. Uh, there are four policies up for discussion. One of them's new. The other three are revised. Uh, I draw your attention to the first one, which is policy GBEBD, employee use of social networking sites. This is a first read, and these um, adjustments are bold faced. Uh, it starts out with the first sentence, which is that the school board strongly discourages school or employees <coughs> from socializing with students on social networking websites and apps. Uh, it now clarifies not to be limited to just, including but not limited to MySpace and Facebook. Um, I think we have to have some more conversation about this moving forward because if you go to the third, fourth, fourth, excuse me, paragraph that is being added, it says staff members should not use social media for school or class related purposes. Uh, and I'm going to ask the administration to consider that and throw that back a bit because there are tools like Twitter uh, and others that we are using. I think in the course of some instructional practice, but more importantly, we use it as well in the schools for communication about activities and events, both for students, uh, especially at the upper grades. Facebook says you have to be 13 to have an account. I, don't, I know that's not always the case for some of our kids, but certainly 13 is a reasonable age for a freshman. <coughs> so everybody in high school might reasonably have access, and I think we're using that as a tool to communicate effectively things like practices <coughs> and activities and otherwise. So. This is just a first read of a revision. This revision came not from internal. It came from the, the School Board Association. <coughs> and uh, I'll ask that next time the administration bring us back their feedback on any version of that that we might be able to keep. But I don't think we can make that bold a statement because we're actually using it now. Well, and, and I don't even think, does MySpace even <laughs> exist anymore? Well, it does for some of us old people, but. <laughs> <laughs> Even Facebook doesn't exist for kids. They've moved it right on. That's for old people now. So <coughs> any other comments or thoughts about that first policy? Uh, this I is just first read, so we don't need active action on this tonight. We just I look forward to hearing from administration. Yeah, I you, agree. You guys know more than. OK, then the next policy is policy <laughs> ILDA, non-educational questionnaire surveys and research. This is a new policy recommended by the School Boards Association. We 
we have a policy ILD which describes and governs educational questionnaires, surveys, and research. This policy deals with non-educational questionnaires, surveys, and research. It holds that parents will be notified at least 10 days prior to the district administering a non-academic or non-educational survey. Uh, it further permits them to review the survey or questionnaire prior to it being administered if they request. It provides an opt-out opportunity ask that it be in writing, that may be email. <clears throat> I think we should take this under advisement, consider that, read through it. We'll be ready for a second read next time. Any other thoughts? Moving along then to policy JCA. This is an existing policy being revised. It is change of school or assignment. The bold face are elements being added. Essentially, it speaks to the superintendent determining when a reassignment is warranted, presenting that reassignment to the board. What's a reassignment? If you move your child out of district, put them to another school, assign them to another school. Or another school within the district. In yeah. yeah. In a larger district, we might reassign right. elsewhere. So the, the superintendent needs to approve it? The superintendent, right now, of course, we only have the one school. No, no, no. But if, the, if my kid goes to a, another school, I need the town's permission to do that? No. Not if you just choose to do that unilaterally, depending on the circumstances. Very seldom, but on occasion, you <coughs> have a situation that might occur. Tell me if I'm wrong, but this is the way I would ex describe it, where for, for reasons you know, extenuating circumstances, it might be most appropriate for a child, even though they live here, to not tr continue to be educated okay. in this school. Okay. And we might send them to a nearby school. Okay. That's generally been an agreement that the superintendents <coughs> broker between themselves. This is now <coughs> further defining what it would take for superintendent to make that happen at district expense. If you can make arrangements privately to send your child to a school somewhere else, certainly on you, but this is when the okay. district would be doing it. Because we only get paid, so like when I sent my child to charter school, the district lost money because I took some of that money and brought it to the <coughs> charter school, but I had to pay the difference. Does that make sense? Yeah. <coughs> okay. That's why he has to okay it. That's right. The last policy is JLCF, our wellness policy. This policy is already on the books. It was driven largely by um, the um, reauthorization of, the, of WIC back in uh, 05, 6, 7, 8, something like that. And we had to have policies, all districts had to create <coughs> policies for wellness. And it's far reaching. It speaks to community involvement, it speaks to um, nutrition, uh, the sale of foods in the building, those that are provided by the school lunch program and those that are not. It talks about allergies. Uh, my understanding is that we're adding a non-discrimination statement to this. I don't see anything else that is added or adjusted, so um, it may also take, uh, where's the agenda? Is, is this just for review? So that's a first read on wellness. Well, that'll come back up at our next meeting. Any discussion about any of those policies at this point? Hearing none, then I draw your attention to the minutes of February 4th, 2016. The minutes were in the packet. I seek a motion to approve as presented, both public and non-public. I make a motion to approve the February 4th, 2016 Town Council Chambers meeting, uh, school board meeting. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Zink, a second from Mr. Kennison. Any adjustments or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes uh, as presented, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? <coughs> and we're unanimous. There was a manifest uh, okay. handed around earlier. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve the payroll and a AP manifests um, uh, 218.16. The payroll in the amount of $251,864.38. 
accounts payable manifest in the amount of $171,232.63 for a total of all manifests of 423.097.01. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Zink, second from Ms. Shelton for the manifest as presented this evening. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? And we're unanimous. I don't believe we have need for non public this evening. We had one at 6 o'clock that preceded <coughs> this meeting uh, to continue our conversation about transition planning. Oh, forgot. Anything else that should be before us for the good of the order tonight from the board? So we will, next meeting, we will talk about the transition more. We'll, we'll keep going. About, we'll talk okay. about the, the job description. Um, uh, in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, we will we will communicate uh, the actions taken tonight within the district and outside of the district, so that uh, those announcements become public and well known. I just had one, um, and yep. I spoke with Meredith uh, before the meeting, and that's about the uh, principal search. Oh, please, yeah. It is of the essence. This is. Um, Thank you. You look at the calendar, and we've got to really crank on this thing. Uh, the board asked me to facilitate the principal search, and quite frankly, um, I don't think there's anything I can add to it. Uh, we talked to, to Meredith um, between Pat and um, Penny. We know about the advertisements. Um, I think we do want to get some input from the board and anybody else, frankly, about the most important characteristics of that superintendent, of that uh, principal, just like we did on the superintendent, because that's going to be the guide for the search committee. What are the, what are the qualities, what are the, the experience in education, and so forth, that we want to have happen? Get it to Meredith as, as uh, soon as possible, and then if I can be of any help, I'd be glad to, but I think, I think we're ready to roll. A any interest or desire to, like, to, 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 to workshop that for any reason? <laughs> for instance, I mean, ads, we're going to get out ASAP. Uh, a profile or something like that, would it be of value to come together at 6 o'clock next two weeks from now at this session and invite public input and board input and, and fuel that profile with a conversation like that, or is that not timely enough? Will we be done with the profile by then? I don't know. directed to me. No, I'm kind of um, looking. <laughs> Al, you're, you're looking Al threw you under the bus, so I was looking, <laughs> at, all, I was looking at all three of you out there. The I mean, three of you all that have to find a principal now. <laughs> you found a superintendent. We're done. <laughs> in, terms of a, in terms of the profile information, yeah. I mean, I think you can get an ad out and still be developing, still be developing some of the, the profile. profile pieces. So I think that would be timely, yes. Um, I think you're going to want your job posted for several weeks before you close right the applications. Away. Yeah, yeah, ideally, Dr. Martin and I spoke about that briefly. Ideally, we'll have something ready to roll out in the papers next week. Um, we won't make deadlines, you know, by getting something out tomorrow, but we'll be able to get something out for next week. And um, so I think if you were to workshop it on the 3rd and collect that kind of information, you'd have ample time to help have that information for me. Thank you. The, She's uh, only now beginning to get a sense of what this is going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> well, did she sign everything? <laughs> she did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> the, uh, the, so I, I, just, I just want to reiterate how important it is. I think if I took each one of you and asked you what the characteristics were that we were looking for in the superintendent, you could, you could, Principal. you uh, No. But in the superintendent, because no. we work with them day by my, day. My point, Patricia, was... If I asked the board to talk about what they was so important with the superintendent, I think we could all we could all right. And it's just a it's a it's a very good guy, cool. right, Patricia? Yes. Thank you. So, what does the board think about that? Do we want to workshop it at six o'clock on the third of March? Invite the public and invite public <coughs> and have that be a conversation about the principal. I think it's a good idea. Okay. And can we put that in the? Um, can you throw that yeah. in the newsletter? Yeah. All right, so, so we'll do that on the 3rd. Great. Um, thank you, Al, for having to announce his own assignment. I'm sorry I didn't say that earlier, that when the board talked about, as, as we talked about our transition planning, we talked about Chris moving to this position, we knew that we were going to have to beat feet on a, on a search, and we said, Al, you did such a great job. Please help us out again. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a so big raise. A big raise? Was good. <laughs> Anything else that should be before us at this meeting? Hearing none, I seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 
On a motion from Mike Kennison, a second from Elizabeth McKinney. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? We are out at 8.01. <coughs> Good night, folks. Good night.